one final time this semester, and we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. We got some NFL mock drafts going on in this ex episode of The Extra Point, and it all starts right now. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Extra Point, the final one this semester. Once again, I'm your host, Griffin Barfield, and today I'm joined with four awesome panelists ready to talk some NFL. Left to right, I got Daniel Duncan, Patrick Driscoll, Let's Luke Beard, and Toby Corston. I mean, guys, dressed up like draft day, I mean, ready ready for it all, really formal. I, I, I really didn't, you know, dress to impress. Um, it also is Patrick's last show with us. Patrick started with The Extra Point last year. Uh, I was there, I was the panelist, and now here he is doing his last show, um, and it'll, it's, it's going to be a fun one. I'm really excited for this one. All we have today, uh, we just have an NFL mock draft. We'll be talking about other you know, popular players, where we think that they'll end up going. Um, so why not just get right into it? We'll start at the top of the clock with the Chicago Bears on the clock, starting at the beginning of the NFL draft. Having the number one pick through the Bryce Young trade they made last year, um, and obviously Caleb Williams is the top guy expected um, but I'll relay it over to my panelists. We'll start with you, Patrick, the Bears fan. Who do you like with the number one pick of the overall NFL draft as a Bears fan? First of all, I got to say shout out to the Carolina Panthers for this generous offering of the number one pick. But I'm going to surprise everyone right here, and I'm going to say Caleb Williams. But no, clearly this guy is the number one consensus overall. Every single expert has him going number one. There's a reason we traded Justin Fields for a six-round pick. I mean, this is just all written in the script. It's going to be Caleb. Um, the big question is who's going to be taken at number nine. But exciting times for the Bears fans if they do this right. Yeah, I have Caleb Williams going number one overall. Do I think he's going to pan out? No, um, but you just can't pass up a talent like that. Everyone has him so high. He's one of the best, if not the best, prospect to ever come through the NFL draft. You have to pick him if you're the Chicago Bears. Um, there's no other option. Yeah, Caleb Williams, um, this is Bear, another Bears quarterback. Are they going to flop again with him or not? He's very talented. He has the off, off the field question marks through the media and all the other stuff. But you can't deny that he's a very talented quarterback. I like to be different. So I'm going with who I think is going to be the best player out of this draft, Jaden Daniels. I know the Bears aren't going to pick him, but if I'm in the uh, Bears draft room, I'm really going to, I would be trying to talk into the ears of the GM and telling them that Caleb Williams isn't the guy. He's a freak athlete. He has a lot of talent. Off the field issues have become a thing that people are talking about. People think he's selfish. He's a diva. I don't really care enough about that. Um, I just care about what they can do on the field, and I think Jaden Daniels is the best on the field prospect in this draft class. Big take from Luke right there with the, with the Jaden Daniels option. But, I mean, you can't really go wrong with Caleb Williams as number one pick. He's been the prospect since he won the Heisman last year. Um, but, you know, it, I, I think Chicago, I, I disagree. I think Caleb Williams will pan out, maybe not to the extent that everyone says being, you know, the Aaron Rodgers, the Patrick Mahomes. But it should be interesting how he pans out. I think we might have a lock there at that number one pick. But the next pick might be a little bit different. Uh, the Washington Commanders on the board – Early on in the mock drafts, it's been Drake May. Now there's been a little bit more of the J uh, the Jaden Daniels. I was about to say Jaden McDaniels. I'm talking about the wrong sport here. He's um, what's up? Jaden McDaniels is hooping. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get we'll get there in a little bit. We'll talk about some NBA playoffs as well. Um, but is who's their guy? Washington at number two with a quarterback spot. I don't think they'll run with Sam Howell next year. Is it Jaden McDaniel? Or is it Jaden Daniels? Is it Drake May? Is it you know JJ McCarthy for? Who knows? Um, who do you guys like at number two? I got to go with Jaden Daniels. I mean, Luke did have a lot of good points. I still think Caleb has the most potential of all the quarterbacks if everything goes his way. I mean, he's going into such a good situation in Chicago. So, 
Sorry. Are you serious? We I, just got Keenan Allen. <laughs> hey, man, you got, you got 34 year old Keenan Allen. Allen. Look, <laughs> I feel better compared to Bryce Young last year. I mean, right, yes, that? absolutely. Yeah. Anyways, is you got 34 this guy's, Allen who has this guy, <laughs> stop. He's got, he, he's a proven winner. He's a proven winner, obviously, won the Heisman. Um, and he's just a dog at LSU. Not, he's just going to bring all of, you know, what he had in college into the NFL. He's got the size. He's got the speed. He's got the strength. He's got the build. Um, I really like Jaden Daniels, and I think that's why he's going to be number two. I agree with Jaden Daniels, one of the most versatile quarterbacks they got in the draft this year. Um, up there with Caleb Williams. It's one of those two, both going first and second. Um, I, you know, Washington really, really needs a quarterback, and I think this is the guy for him. Yeah, I got J.D. as well. A little bit of a different reason. Um, it's obviously a two-horse race between him and Drake May. Um, and I think the difference is, I think Drake May right now has a little bit more, like he's a little bit more um, organized than Jaden Daniels is. I think he is more ready to play in the NFL. But Jaden Daniels has a much higher ceiling. I think Jaden Daniels has so much more potential than Drake May. Um, I think this is what you look at with the spread with Jaden Daniels. High ceiling, but low floor. And Drake May is kind of in between. I don't think he has that much more room to grow, but he also isn't going to fall off as much. So I think that's the pick that the commanders have to make. Do they want somebody who's ready to play immediately and you know what you're going to get out of him? Or do you want to take a chance on someone who has a lot of potential to be a really, really good quarterback? And I think that's what they're going to take. I don't think they want to settle for going 9-7. and seven. I think they want to be a team in a few years that's going 13-4. Uh, and four. Yeah, I, I put Caleb Williams. I don't think they're going to get him. He's not going to fall. But I, I think Jaden Daniels is the guy they're going to get. I just, with Caleb Williams, he's a different prospect to me than a lot of people. I think he's a really good player. He's a great quarterback. To me, Jaden Daniels just has more than Caleb Williams is. He's bigger than him. I think he's faster than him. I think he has a better arm than him. And I, I think a lot of people are not taking into account that Caleb Williams is playing in a, a Pac-12 that has no defense, and they haven't had a defense in 15 years, and Pac-12 quarterbacks have not turned out great in the past couple of years. We've seen it. All SEC quarterbacks, they continuously produce, and they continuously put up great numbers, and that's what I think Jaden Daniels will do. Because, I mean, we saw him ball out in the Pac-12. He goes to the SEC with a much harder defensive division, and that's the same thing he was doing, if not better. Yep. So I, He was throwing to two first-rounders. But I, he also made them first-rounders. They weren't first-rounders going into this year until Jaden Daniels started to him. That's fair. Yeah, I think you two, uh, Toby and Luke, you guys make good points um, with, the, with the May and the Daniels, you know, discussion. I think May might have the better floor, but, J but Daniels has a higher ceiling. Um, but, you know, I, I really think it's not bad of a pick for of either player if you're Washington. Um, but, you know, obviously it should be exciting. We'll see what happens um, with that. Next up, Daniels team, New England Patriots on the clock. New, new head coach, uh, post Bill Belichick era. And uh, in, my, in my opinion, I'm expecting a quarterback. Daniel, I'll let you take the four in a little bit. Patriots at number three, who you got? I expect Drake May because I expect Jaden Daniels to go second. Personally, though, I'd rather, if Jaden Daniels goes second and we can't get him, I'd rather trade more likely or take Marvin Harrison. Um, lean towards the trade because we get more value out of that pick. And I feel like the quarterbacks pass Jaden Daniels and Kelly Williams are more on par with each other, like Michael Penix, uh, Bo Nix, um, J.J. McCarthy even. I feel like we could trade back to like the 8 to 12 range and still get one of those really good quarterbacks who can develop over time because we're not winning a Super Bowl next year. And I think the <laughs> Patriots organization knows that. At least he so, knows. Yeah. yeah. And we need to build a lot and get some damn wide receivers. So, yeah. Look, I don't think it's the right decision, but <laughs> – I think they're going to take Drake May. Mm -hmm. I think Drake May is so overhyped. I'm sorry. Not as overhyped as another guy I'm going to talk about later. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't bring him up. <laughs> I'm going to bring him up. But, yeah, I, I think Drake May is the typical. He's got all the intangibles. He's ready to, you know, have a good rookie year. He's so prepared for the NFL. And I think that's all just going to go in the, like, craft's head too much. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to take um, Drake May, even though I think they should take Marvin Harrison Jr., but it's kind of like that's later. Mac Jones 2.0. Yeah. yeah. I, and I'm in the same boat with Patrick. I think they're going to go Drake May. I don't think it's the right pick. He is Mac Jones 2.0. They're the same player, and pretty much everything they do is the exact same. They have the exact same play style. 
But I think Drake May is also coming in under a less experienced coach, which might hurt him a little bit. Mm -hmm. I do think uh, the Patriots made the correct choice with their coaching hire. But I think just going with a rookie quarterback, first year of a new coach, that's a lot to bring into immediately. And I just I don't think that the Patriots have the talent to surround Drake May right now and to surround a rookie quarterback. I think it would be better for them to trade, go for a veteran quarterback, maybe make a trade for a veteran quarterback, hit the free agent market, see if they can find anybody for a year or two. They're not winning right now. And as you, like you know that, mm -hmm. I think the Patriots know they're not winning right now. Take two years, rebuild your roster, then get a quarterback. Or get a veteran who can lead you for three or four years and just build around them and you can get back to at least a playoff spot. But they're nowhere near a playoff contender right now with the roster they have. And if they have Drake May, they're going to be in the same cycle in the next three years where they pick another quarterback just like they did with Mac Jones three years ago. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about the Patriots in a second, but I actually have a trade going down right here. Now this is a three-team trade. It's a little bit complicated. So wow. I have New England trading with the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings are going to draft up and pick Drake May. I think they really like him. You want Drake May throwing to, throwing to JJ. Look, I just said Drake May is, has this much room for improvement. Not much. But he is NFL ready. I do think he might be the most NFL ready quarterback in this draft class. I, he's shaking his head. I, Why? No, I, I do. Why? He, he I, like, is the most NFL ready guy, and he's going to suck. Because, yeah, so look, he's not going to be great, but we also saw him against Clemson here. He, he rolled out to his right and threw a 40 yard bomb across his body on, on a dot for a touchdown. Like, he has the skills. I don't think he's going to be great in the NFL, but I think the Vikings are going to want him. So they're going to trade up and take him because they don't have a quarterback, and they have a team that, you know what, if Drake May pans out, they could make a run into the playoffs. Then the Patriots would trade back up to number four and take the Cardinals pick. So this was just a three for an 11, and now it's going to be an 11 for a four. And then the Cardinals are going to trade with the Chargers to get back to the five pick, and the Chargers are going to trade down to the 11. So all that matters right now is that the He's Patriots are trading their pick to the Vikings for number three. He's playing and, Madden. And drafting Drake May. Dude, that's where your franchise modes are absurd. That's where we're starting. So they're draft the Vikings are drafting Drake May at number three, and we'll break down the rest at the next pick. Cool. Jeez Louise, man. I mean, Toby, you're going to have to remember, <laughs> remember these picks for me because, I mean, I guess you're playing chess and we're playing checkers. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I do think that all these top three picks will all go quarterback um, in the order of Williams, Daniels, and May. Um, I do like, like, like you said, Daniel, the Marvin Harrison Jr., I like him as well as a prospect. Um, will New England go for him? I mean, the draft is in a few hours, so we don't know. Uh, but that should be exciting. I'm excited to see how, you know, Gerard Mayo and that New England, or New England organization kind of rolls out, you know, what they want to do for years to come with that rebuild. Um, but next up, it seemed that maybe not – maybe not is in as much of a rebuild. The Arizona Cardinals didn't have a quarterback for much. Kyler Murray's back next year. Uh, under another head coach, Jonathan Gannett's his second year. Uh, I've been a little bit, I've seen Marvin Harrison on these, on these charts. Malik Neighbors, I've seen on one. Brock Bowers, I've seen on one. Where do you think Arizona goes with this for the next pick? I think Marvin Harrison is going to be the guy for Arizona. I don't think he's the best receiver in the draft personally. I think Malik Neighbors is the best receiver in the draft, but I think it's a, it's a 1A, 1B situation where Marvin Harrison, yes, is a generational talent, but I also think Malik Neighbors is a generational talent. I don't think you can go wrong either way with these guys. Um, Harrison's super experienced. He grew up in an NFL family, which always helps. Uh, you're around the game, and the Cardinals need a receiver. They need Kyler to throw it to somebody because they have nobody right now. So I think uh, Marvin Harrison is just the right guy to go with. He's big, he's fast, and he can catch. So. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of the same scenario as uh, the first two picks, Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels. Like, I don't think you can pass up Marvin Harrison, but he also might not be the best player. He's not yeah. far and away better. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be Marvin Harrison Jr. I, I want the Bears to draft this guy so bad. You don't even know. I literally put a comment in the Bears – Instagram about a draft Marvin Harrison Jr. button, it got 3,000 likes. I mean, it was ridiculous. But this guy, this is going to be my hot take real quick. I think he's going to be the best player out of this draft class. 
20 years down the line. I mean, he's got, I, I know I just said the phrase, all the intangibles. He's big, he's strong, he's fast. I mean, his dad, Marvin Harrison, was an absolute stud, and he's like three inches taller than him. And going through his rookie year when, if he goes through struggles or anything, talk about having someone in your corner. Marvin Harrison, his own dad will be there for him. And I'm just so excited to see what he's going to do. And if any team passes on him past the first four picks, that's just beyond me. And the Cardinals need wide receiver, especially a big physical one after losing oh, what's his name? Clemson guy. Andre Duke. Hopkins. D-Hop, yep. yeah. Um, they need that space to fill in the void, especially if they want to keep and stick with um, the quarterback. Kyler. What's his name? Kyler Murray. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. But, yeah, that's assuming that the Patriots trade and don't take Marvin Harrison. All right, so back to this mess of a trade. We just had the Patriots trade to the Vikings. Um, and now the Patriots traded back up with the cards to take the number four pick. And with this number four pick, they have a couple options. J.J. McCarthy is really high on draft boards right now. People really like him. He's the typical, he's the typical New England Patriots quarterback. Let's look at the last, you know, quarterbacks they ha they've had. Bailey Zappi, Mac Jones, Brian Ho Hoyer, Cam Newton's an anomaly, Tom Brady, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jacoby Brissett, Matt Castle, and Drew Bledsoe. Those are like all the same guy, just some are better than the others. And I think the Patriots, with their new coaching staff, they want to get away from it. They're still going to, they're not, they're not going to go crazy, but I think they're going to take a quarterback right here, and I think they're going with Michael Penix. He can sling the ball. He's, he's risen up the draft boards. He can sling it. They, he has been rising up the draft wow. boards. I think they are going to reach right here, and I think they're going to go after Michael Penix. Because he's, he's going to get picked. He, he's going to be a top 15 pick. They, they're, they're going to want him. I think he's going to be in the second round. I think I want him. As, I as every Hawks single play, GM is him asking him about like his MRIs. Like, you saw that bar he dropped on Instagram. Yeah, he, had, he had to make a whole post about it because people yeah, were worried about it. I still think he's going to go up. He, he, I, I, think, I think the Patriots want to go somewhere different with this. I don't think they like the Drake May, the J.J. McCarthy's. That's been their quarterback for the last 20 years. But it's, it's worked. Yeah, but it's not you working anymore. One NFL, they have a brand, one, they have a brand one one NFL line but backer hitting if, that knee if, wrong. If this is it's um, over, if yeah. this is Bill Belichick, completely different story. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna go. But it's still Robert Kraft, and you have to think he he's pretty big in the decision. Uh, yeah, but he also he ha I feel like he has to do something different. He's changing the whole. It's a it's That's a true. new guard. He is. It's a new guard. Fan, I like it. I would not trade back up to four to take. Uh, you, Four would I be would beyond me. You, you could, could get probably him. get him, but I, I still think they're. I, I think they're going to want to get back into that pick to guarantee it. Mm. And I think they're going to take Michael Penix. They, the I mean, only I thing they have more leeway because they could get like Bo Nix later if they wanted. Yeah, I don't. Think I don't think they want Bo Nix. I, I, I more to Cooper. get back up after they just. Give me Bo Nix. That's just yeah. that's just where I see them going with this pick. I think they want to take a quarterback high in the draft. I do think it's a reach. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he should be the fourth pick. But I think if this trade plays out the way it is, they're going to go after that, especially with a, another quarterback being drafted at three that takes away the top three quarterbacks. I mean, don't be from the top, bro. I, yeah. I mean, the first, the first real, the first real hot take I've seen. Um, that one's crazy. But, but, up to going but up. yeah, if you're going with four, I, I think I think Marvin Harrison's the top option um, in whatever Toby's. Madden franchise <laughs> trade thing. You know, I think Penix could be good. You know, he's old, he's experienced, he has that arm, like Toby said. Um, do I think that he'll go as high as four? I mean, we'll see. I will find out in a few hours. But that should be that should be interesting for sure. Um, but something a pick that I'm very interested in seeing is the next pick because you can go a lot of different ways, and that is um, the Los Angeles Chargers. New head coach and Jim Harbaugh. You have a franchise guy in Justin Herbert, but I've heard people wanting him to take a quarterback. I've seen him trade down. I've seen an offensive tackle. I've seen a wide receiver. I've seen a defender. And, I mean, that's the question I have for you guys is, where does Jim Harbaugh on the Chargers go with this next pick? The answer is it won't be Jim Harbaugh on the Chargers. It's going to be Minnesota making a big move. They're going to trade up um, to get J.J. McCarthy. This guy's draft stock is completely skyrocketing. I don't, I don't know why. I'm not too big on McCarthy. Uh, look, I have so much respect for him, but I think that Michigan team was just so good, and I feel like he was more of a game manager than, you know, like 
a big like showtime carry the team on his back guy. I don't think it's going to translate to the NFL. He will have JJ. Um, obviously, you can't forget about that. But still, I think Minnesota is going to be really aggressive. They want to get their quarterback, and they're going to make a trade with the Chargers in that number five spot. Yeah, I have the exact same thing going down. Uh, I think I'm a little too mean because Patrick's being nice and saying he doesn't know why. J.J. McCarthy's the biggest bum to come into a draft class in the last 15 years. J.J. McCarthy is Josh Rosen. He's Ryan Leaf. He's Zach Wilson. Ryan Leaf Arnold. is crazy. J.J. McCarthy is the worst draft pro quarterback prospect I've seen in the first round in my lifetime. He is not a first-round quarterback. He's not a second-round quarterback. He's not a backup quarterback. He will be in the XFL in three years, throwing it with the Birmingham Stallions or whatever the names are. He is not an NFL quarterback, and he will never be an NFL quarterback. I hate him as a prospect. I'm sure he's a great kid. <laughs> hate him as a prospect. He's a game manager. He's not a game changer. And he has no game. He, we really got sample sizes of him throwing the ball in Michigan, and they're very small sample sizes because they don't throw the ball in Michigan because it's, you know, had, negative he, 20 he every game. He had like 400 run. less yards than Drake May this year. I also don't think Drake May's legit, so you're proving my point. He's worse than Drake May, who I also don't think is any good. So this just – this is one of those quarterback classes a lot of people are hyping up, and I don't see the hype behind a lot of the guys. It was – was it 2021? Was that the Trevor Lawrence year? Yeah. This yeah. is that quarterback class all over again. They're hyping all these guys up, uh -huh. and it's like, oh, this is the best quarterback class we've seen in 15 years. Well, that's and why. And this class is going to be horrible, outside of two, three guys maybe. That's how I feel about so, it. So to touch on your point, yes, I do think they're hyping this draft class up way too much, but it's also because they, it's, a, it's a business. They want the viewers. They want everybody talking. Well, about I understand it. that too, um, but like that's why they're as a businessman, I like to – to feed the real product to people and let them know that J.J. McCarthy's a bum. Yeah, but nobody, nobody wants the real product. Um, but oh, no, with this pick, uh, just quickly, the cards get it. The Chargers <laughs> trade back, and they're drafting Marvin Harrison, just like you guys said. They need that wide receiver. Um, they'll get an extra pick out of it and still get the same guy. I think they're going to love this if this goes down. Um, and the Chargers will trade back to 11, and they will be keeping um, Justin Herbert at quarterback as of now. Definitely. According to Antonio Brown, he's going to the Vikings. <laughs> And I get all my news from Antonio Brown. <laughs> I just think the Chargers need a wide receiver. I can see him trading back. There's a yeah. ton of need, like a ton of teams that really they have need a lot of leeway, yeah, like for sure. The Broncos got Jack yep. Squat. And Zach Wilson. Yeah, Zach Wilson. They can save their jerseys. But um, I, I do like Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze. Uh, they could they could take him there. Mm -hmm. I, th I think Neighbors would be the right pick if the Chargers yeah. stay. I think Neighbors is the guy. Yeah, I completely agree. I, with that. Yeah, or an offensive tackle, for sure. Yeah. I just don't see them staying there, though. I don't know. Especially it's, when they just got rid of Keenan. It's Allen just so much. Yeah. It's true. just so much that I just don't see them staying. I think they have a really good roster already mm. that they can trade back and they'll be okay. Should I drop a bombshell now or should I wait until we talk about it? Dude, you've been dropping. You've been dropping. Are we going in a couple rounds? Or in, in, not in a couple what rounds, but in, in, the, in the next segment. Dro drop a bombshell. You can do it in the next segment. Okay. Okay. Never mind. You do it in the next segment. Uh, but I, I think my favorite part of this mock draft so far is every time Toby is, has announced his last three picks, he has shown his whiteboard to say what has gone on and has refreshed the, like everybody and what he's been doing. Just, I, just to make sure everybody knows what's going on. <laughs> um, but I, I think if you're Los Angeles, I mean, I think that McCarthy's going here in a trade. Um, but again, if the Chargers keep this pick, um, I, I agree with Daniel. I think you got to go to receiver. And you know, I, whether I think Odunze and um, Malik Neighbors are both great picks, I don't really think you could go wrong with a guy like Latham as well, uh, J.C. Latham. I've seen him in a couple mock drafts. Um, but yeah, five is a really big wild card spot because it, it, the Los Angeles Chargers are a team that made the playoffs two years back. Um, so it, that should be interesting. Um, but in our, in our next segment, we'll, I mean, obviously, with college football and the big-name players, they're, we're going to kind of discuss those big-name players and where we think they're going. Obviously, they might not be those first-round picks. They might be the second, the day two, day three guys. But um, these are guys that mean a lot to us. Um, first guy, Michael Penix. Obviously, Toby told us that he is a New England Patriot. What, did the other, what do you other three guys think? Where is Michael Penix going to end up at the end of draft night? I mean, I think he's a Seahawk. I, I just I think he'll, he'll play well. Uh, he's not going to start. I think they'll use Gino to help him learn a little bit. I think Gino's a really good vet that can teach a younger guy coming in because Gino's old. He's been in that backup role before. He understands that it takes a while to get to the top spot in the league, and Gino got back to the top spot. And I think uh, he'll 
remind Penix of that, like, hey, man, you're not below me forever. Like, I'm here to teach you now. This is a passing of the torch kind of thing. And I think Gino's a down-to-earth dude. He's not a guy who gets too cocky. He's a team guy, and he knows it. And uh, I think, I mean, I think Penix wants to stay in Washington, I would think. Yeah. I think he likes it there. I think the fans of the Seahawks are also fans of Washington football, so they'll want to keep him. And I think the Seahawks like him as a prospect, because I think a lot of people like him as a prospect. It's just the injuries. That's the only question about him. That's all I have. Yeah, going off of that, I think he's also going to go to Seattle. I think it'll be a second-round pick. Um, just to be brief on this, I think Seattle's just perfect. I mean, he's staying in you know, his familiar area. And what I would really like about this is that there's no one better to be under than Geno Smith in Seattle because Penix has gone through his fair share of adversity. So has Geno Smith, though. I mean, this is a guy who had to sit behind so many quarterbacks. He had a lot of hype coming out of West Virginia. Um, he played like he did not play well at all in the NFL, and he patiently waited for his moment. And I think being under um, – Smith, it would just work out perfect for the Seahawks because Smith could maybe give like one or two more like solid years and then he could come in. But I think, yeah, Seattle, it's just perfect. Yeah, I think Seattle's perfect. I could also see the Broncos, maybe even Vegas, reaching and taking them there. But Seattle's makes the most sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I have him at four, but as a Seahawk fan, I would love for him to come to the Seahawks. I think he, with, the, with another new coaching staff, at the helm, I think he's a great guy to learn under Geno Smith, kind of take the organization maybe a little bit of a new direction. We've had some scrambling quarterbacks as of late, maybe go back to a little bit more of a pocket passer, sling the ball around, uh, get a power running back, run the ball. I don't know. He, he would be fun to see in a Seahawks uniform for years to come. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I do see Penix out west. Um, you know, Seattle, Seattle, I would love being able to throw to DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and Jackson Smith and Jigba with the armor that he has is something that would feed families, in my opinion. Uh, I'd love to see him in Denver, too. I mean, Denver, there's not really a quarterback battle anymore after Russell Wilson gone. I mean, you have Zach Wilson, but I think any rookie could take there. Uh, in Vegas, too. Um, I do know Garoppolo's locked up. Uh, I don't think you stick with Aiden O'Connell another year. Um, so that should, be, that should be interesting. I'm excited to see where Panix ends up, because I think that he could be a little bit of a sleeper, maybe come on later on in his rookie year and do something big. Um, the next one, I, I think all of us have talked about him already. I don't know if Daniel has, um, and that's Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy. Um, where do you guys see him ending up? I know Patrick and Luke have him going to the Vikings at five. Toby and Daniel, where do you guys like J.J. McCarthy in this draft? Um, sadly, I'll say the Patriots, because I think that's what <laughs> will realistically happen if they pass on May and trade down, and then they like him for some reason. That's what I'm hearing is that the Patriots like J.J. McCarthy. So, Toby, I saw your board. You're, you're That's sad. mediocrity for you, my friend. sad. <laughs> yeah. Zach, you might want to get ready to pan to uh, Griffin's reaction, but J.J. McCarthy, you are a New York Giant with the sixth pick of the NFL draft. Um, he, this would be like the most typical Giants draft move. <laughs> they pay their quarterback millions and millions of dollars. There's tears in Griffin's To be eyes. terrible. <laughs> to be terrible. Sorry. Daniel Jones is not a good quarterback. And you know what? They're going to be like, they're going to they're gonna pull a, a, a try and pull a Green Bay Packers and, and, and take Daniel Jones. And he, or not Daniel Jones, J.J. McCarthy. And, and he's just not going to pan out. I think he is really high on a lot of people's draft boards. I, I don't know why. Luke, I, I agree with Luke. I won't be as mean as Luke, but I agree with him. But he is, is just not the guy. And the Giants seem to love that type of quarterback. So, <laughs> Someone who's not the guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's where they'll be going with it. And I can't wait to see the, rea the reaction of all of my fellow Giants, or all of my friends that are Giants fans, just see the pain in their eyes when J.J. McCarthy walks up on that stage. I mean, I mean one thing's for sure. Uh, Toby and I will not be in the same room during that draft. Um, I... I mean, I, I, yes, I am a Giants fan. Uh, I think you go one of three ways. I... <laughs> McCarthy's one of them. Um, if I'm being realistic, I would love a receiver. I'd love neighbors or Odunze if one of them's left. I would assume one of them's left. Um, but <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on. Um, first one, first, first Clemson guy we're talking about, and that's cornerback Nick Wiggins out of the Clemson, out of the many Clemson guys that are going to the draft. Wiggins is expected to be the first. He's ex also expected to be the only guy coming out of the first round. Um, being, being a quarterback uh, and potentially one of the first cornerbacks off the board. 
Um, so where do you guys like Nate Wiggins going in this draft? He's been projected in the mid round, mid to late first. Uh, but what do you guys think? I think he's going to the Steelers, realistically. I mean, they have good cornerbacks, but I think pairing him up with Joey Porter Jr. will be nice. Uh, and then Minka and as another DB, mm -hmm. they have the best secondary in the league, probably, if they can pair that group up. Uh, I think Wiggins is the best uh, D-back in the draft. I think him and Dijon are very close, but I, I prefer Wiggins as a prospect. I think he's a little faster. I think he's, uh, th he plays the ball a little better, in my opinion. I don't know. I, I just really like Wiggins as a player. I think I'm also biased, but uh, I mean, I, I see him going either the Steelers or maybe the Jaguars. They need a D back. Jags need a corner. Yeah, really Jags need D backs, and he could be their guy. I don't know. I saw Tony Khan last night, their director of football operations, got uh, hit with a pile driver during uh, AEW. So I don't know if he'll be, uh, be in the right mindset to draft a guy because he's in a neck brace right now, apparently. It's all scripted. It's wrestling. But he's uh, maybe he's out of his mind and he doesn't go with anyone good. Uh, yeah, I have him going to the Jags at 17. Uh, he's just he, he is a really, really good player. He is a little bit small for the position, but I think once you get over that, his speed, his movement, his, he's just a really good natural football player. And I, I think that's what Jacksonville wants. And we see it with a lot of teams. They like drafting from certain schools. Jacksonville has had success from Clemson. They know what they're going to get from a Clemson guy. And I think that's why they go with, this, with, they go with him in this pick. I like Jags because of the familiarity with Clemson players. I put Ravens in there as a potential option maybe because they kind of need something out there. Mm -hmm. But he is definitely the best cover corner in the yeah. draft this year. So the Jags need him. I'm going to be a little different right here. I think he's going to fall all the way to the second round. I think if Atlanta could get him, that would be really cool. I and I, 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 I saw you shaking your head. But, I mean, there's just so many good corner prospects. And, I look, I'm really high on Wiggins, too. But I just think he's just going to fall a little bit. I think he's going to fall right into the hands of Atlanta. And if they pair him up with A.J. Terrell, a Clemson alum, that would be absolutely phenomenal. So that's going to be my big prediction. I'd be happy with him, though. I mean, oh, I definitely. Love this, I'd be happy with him as a Falcons fan, but I just don't see him falling to us. Uh, at least, I mean, the eighth pick, we're not going to pick him. That's too high. And then 41, I just don't see him falling. I think there's far, too many so. teams that need that need that, defensive that need, backs. Yeah. yeah. This is such a like, even though he is like really like the 429 changes everything. I just feel like the DB class is just so deep that. There's a small chance, but that's it's my always that way too with DBs. There are always so many guys you can pick that are like diamonds in the rough mm -hmm. that you can take a shot later in, and, and then and it's hard to know guy. who's better than who just based on where they play, the system they right. play in. You gotta, yeah, you got to draft based on the system it's they played in thing. in college and what you play in. There's a lot of things that go into it. So. Yeah, I I agree. I think. Um, you know, I think he falls in that mid first round. Um, I mean, I see him. I see him as an Indianapolis Colt, uh, but I can see him falling anywhere. I like him at Jag at. at in Jacksonville, I like him in Pittsburgh, uh, Los Angeles, the Rams. I, I I've seen him in mock drafts there. I think that'd be a solid fit. Um, but yeah, like, like like Luke said, I mean, I really think this cornerback room is really deep, and uh, I think that you can get a lot of good players out of this position, out of this draft class. So uh, it should be interesting. I do expect him to be drafted today. I don't expect him to fall to the second round. Um, so that should be interesting. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, you could be wrong. It's the NFL draft. That kind of stuff happens. But we'll move on to Oregon quarterback Bo Nix. I mean, this guy, I would think, I would assume is a day two, day three guy. Um, you know, I don't really expect him to go in the first round, but with his age and his experience, I do see a team picking him up. But where do you guys see him ending up in this draft? Bo Nix, you are an Atlanta Falcon. With their uh, second round pick, I see them taking him. They, ju they did pick up Kirk Cousins. They just paid. The no, I got it. Well, he's. He <laughs> So he can learn. He has, a small, he has a small shelf life. I think it's similar yeah. to like what you guys were saying with Michael yeah. Penix and the Seahawks. I see learn under a veteran. Mm -hmm. He's got talent. We've seen him succeed in college just about everywhere he's gone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's a great quarterback right now, but I think you're looking at he can have the potential, learn under Kirk Cousins, and then take over the role. The Falcons, again, are probably not winning anytime soon. In four, almost won the division. Kirk Cousins right? deals four years you, though. You could have, you could almost okay. win that division with a seven and nine record. So let's. Uh, well, that's why Kirk Cousins puts us over the hump. 
Exactly. Okay. Anyways, I think that I think Atlanta wants a quarterback at some point that they can develop to maybe be their franchise quarterback here in the future. Another Matt Ryan. I think he kind of fits the play style that the Falcons like to play. Um, and you have the veteran quarterback that he can learn under. He doesn't have to play immediately. It fits. Yeah, Falcons are running a new organization though now. They have a new coach. Okay. Uh, I I do like Bo Nix actually mm -hmm. a lot as a prospect. I think he's really good. When I look at Bo Nix, I think, you know, um, he, he's really enjoying where he's at. He really likes the system. Uh, he's having fun. I could see him being a dark horse for MVP, honestly. But um, it, if y'all have seen the Heisman name, you'd know. Oh, okay. But uh, I, I actually I do think he's a great prospect. I think he's a freak athlete uh, compared to a lot of guys in this draft. He's, he's kind of underwhelming when you look at him from he was in college for six years and mm -hmm. he didn't really win anything. But he's also puts up a lot of big numbers. Even while he was at Auburn, he wasn't great, but he put up huge numbers. Yeah. And everyone kept putting him in the uh, Heisman race, and he finally hit that mark in his last year. And I think it's only up from there for him. Where he goes, I genuinely have no clue. I, the Broncos, maybe, I could see taking him. He feels like, I feel like Sean Payton would love him. Mm -hmm. um, I could see him going to Atlanta as a backup guy. I think we need a backup. And I would be okay having a rookie come in, uh, learn how to deal under Kirk Cousins, who I still think is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that would be a good fit for him. Yep. I'm trying to think if there's any like dark horse places I think he could go. Maybe the backups to the Giants, possibly, when they finally get rid of Daniel Jones, who I actually also think is a good quarterback if he doesn't get hurt, but he gets hurt too much. Yeah. So... Uh, there's just a lot of places I could see him landing, and I think he'll fit whatever system he goes to. The Raiders, I think, is a big one. Mm -hmm. I think the Raiders could really use him. I think he would like it in Vegas. I think he fits the Raiders pretty well from the, the standpoint with the quarterbacks they have right now. They have Aiden O'Connell and Jimmy Garoppolo. He kind of gives me the vibes of those two guys already. I think he would be better than Jimmy Garoppolo off rip. So I, I think I'm going to cement him with the Raiders. I think that's where I'm going with it. I just I don't think he can be successful anywhere where he has to start in his first year. I get that too, though. But he can learn learn under Jimmy if he needs yep. to. Yeah. I think I think he'll. I don't know when. I I don't know why my mind is telling me I think he's just going to end up in Denver. Yeah. I I think Sean Payton's pretty big on him. Stay in the West Coast. Um, Probably no, definitely two or three. I think he got if he got picked in the first round, that's a little bit early. But I'm going with Denver for Bo Nix. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking Denver, Las Vegas. Uh, same thing with Michael Penix. They're gonna try and reach and pick one of these guys. But he kind of does fit the Denver vibe, and Las Vegas could use another quarterback as well. Yeah. The Broncos are way more desperate for a quarterback right now. I agree. So. Yeah, I, I see him going west as well. Uh, I see him as a third-round pick. I, I think that he'll probably go in the second, uh, late second, early third. Um, and, again, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at Vegas. Uh, they they kind of don't really have a quarterback situation. I totally forgot Jimmy Garoppolo is not on the Raiders anymore. He's a ram, um, which makes that quarterback room really slim. Denver could be cool too. Um, but like Luke said, I really don't think that he could be a day-one starter. I think that you need to progress him a little bit. But... Numbers don't lie, and you know that should be interesting. But to close it out, we'll do another Clemson guy, um, Clemson linebacker Jeremiah Trotter. He's generally the second Clemson guy that should be off the board, um, expecting second, third round. Um, but, I mean, where do you guys think that he will end up in the NFL? Yeah, I got him going to the Seahawks at 81. Uh, Seahawks lost both their linebackers this year. They picked up a couple options for one-year guys, but it, they don't like them that much, I think. They're looking to go into this draft, get some linebackers. He's one of the better linebackers on the board, but they also don't want to reach with their picks. The Seahawks have other things that they need, like offensive linemen and whatnot. We won't get into that. But he's a very, very good linebacker. Um, Clemson, again, has had successful players in the NFL. They are a program that will consistently produce successful NFL players. And I think the Seahawks like that. I think it just fits. It's third round. Um, somebody could reach and go for him in the second. I don't think it's that big of a reach. Um, but again, it's a, it's a talented class. There's a lot of linebackers. It's just tough to differentiate where they're going. But I, I think the Seahawks like the type of kid that Clemson produces. They have a very specific type of player that they like. Um, and I think he, he would fit very well in Seattle, but it could be a toss-up. Yeah, I also have the Seahawks. Uh, Wagner, what, retired? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I, I think they need to go linebacker at some point. You have to get a younger guy at linebacker. They 
just signed two kind of older fellas. Yeah, just and it's, fillers. Basically. Yeah, it's it's filler guys. And if you get uh, a younger linebacker in the draft, I think that's the best place to go. Linebacker's never a huge pick for any team, really. No one ever really goes linebacker first round anymore just because you can replace them. Uh, it's kind of like running back. But I, I think I think Charter's a really good linebacker. I don't think he lives up to the potential he has. That's just yeah. from what I – I don't know why I get that from. I just don't think he's going to live up to a lot of other guys. But I do think he'll be a, a solid maybe 10-year NFL vet. He'll go to Seattle. He'll bounce around some teams. Kind of gives me Devin White vibes, but not quite as good as Devin White. He's yeah. not going to be stellar, but he's going to yeah. be – Yeah. He, he'll stay in the NFL. Yeah. I got him going to Pittsburgh. Like, Mike Tomlin goes to every single Clemson Pro Day, it feels like. Trotter wasn't even working out when I attended to cover it, and he was talking to Jeremiah for a pretty long time. So was the GM. Um, I mean, and Tomlin's just big on Clemson guys, so this, this is what's kind of making me lean towards Trotter. I think Trotter's going to be the guy they pick up. Um, something just telling me that's going to happen, and I think Trotter's going to have a really solid career. I think Pittsburgh's, like, perfect for him. Obviously, we know his dad played in the league on the Commanders, but I think Pittsburgh will snag him probably day, day three, very early day three, maybe late day two. We'll see, but I, Tomlin just loves his guys, and Tomlin's big on Trotter, so. I like the vibes of that. I can't really think of a specific team. I'm going to stick with um, – Patrick's, <laughs> but I think um, what other team? The Bucks could use a linebacker. I think maybe? anyone can really. Use Re- like, I mean, yeah. when it's that yeah. late, yeah. it's, it's third kind of hard. Yeah. Anybody wants a young, like, talented linebacker? I could see him going to the Bucks, the Dolphins, yeah. the Steelers. It's just one of those positions yeah. that you can take at it's, any time, and yeah. you're going to use them somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, a team that I'm surprised none of you guys said was the team that his dad played for, Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I, I, I see him going between 50 and 50, 53 because uh, the Eagles have two picks there and Steelers have a pick between, between those picks. Um, so I, I think that he ends up in one of those two spots. I think Seattle is a good spot as well. Um, but, but like Toby and Luke said, I think this guy has a great career ahead of him. Uh, do I think that he's going to be the best linebacker ever at the end of his career? I don't think so. But I think that he will do his job and you know, put Clemson on the map again as you know, one of the top guys that have came from that school. Um, so it should be interesting. I, I mean, I do think that he will probably not be a Thursday night guy, maybe a Friday guy, um, but we'll see. I mean, you've seen crazier stuff happen in the NFL draft. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's going to do it for this episode and this year of the Extra Point. Um, it's been a blast. As first year's host, I'll be back next year to be doing it. Um, before we head out, we do have one senior that will be making his last ever show with us, and that is Patrick. He started with the Extra Point. He ended with the extra point. You can't thank him enough for everything that he has done. Patrick, you guys applaud. Any last words before we sign off today? Um, okay, spoiler. This isn't my last time ever in the studio. I, I got to go out with a little sports block next week during finals. I'll, I'll, ma- I'll make it happen. But, yeah, just try to get on air as much as you can. I just want to say, you know, as I'm sitting at one of the desks that Zach back there knows how much of a process it was to get in here. Griffin and Daniel, they know um, what the original desk were. Yep. And we, we've come a long way, right? We've come a long way. So just a celebration of how far we've come in here, all the magic we've produced, and I'm really excited for the future of Tiger Vision. So, yeah, thank you guys. Patrick, it's, it's been a pleasure. I mean, you know, working alongside you for the last two years has been awesome. I can't wait to see what you do. Um, but until then... We'll be back next next fall with some college football, some football. You know the drill if you've been here before. Um, but for the final time, for Daniel Duncan, Patrick Driscoll, Luke Beard, Toby Corston, I'm Griffin Barfield. Special thanks to Zach in the control room for getting this all put together. Uh, special thanks to Tiger Vision as well. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. But until then, we will see you next time. Peace. <laughs>